Uh, yeah, so here we are, you know, um, <laughs> the introductions are pretty straightforward and um, somewhere along the line, uh, it's a case of, hey, look, if you want to ask uh, any question, feel free to ask me as well. You know, so okay, two -way that works, that works. All right, so, I mean, it's good to have you on the platform. Uh, well, thanks, thank you for thank you for inviting me and allowing me to have the uh, the privilege of being on your platform. Um, thank you. Uh, I would accept that because uh, it's a privilege to talk to you as well on so many levels. Um, thank you. We we have been um, not only following your work, but we've been passionately being you know aligned with what you are doing and uh, mm -hmm. progressively what you are trying to do. Um, all these conversations happening in the background in silos, they all add up somehow. Um, yeah. You value to, 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 to people who are really pushing for a better Nigeria. And obviously, exactly. you know, we're only here talking now because we both share the same kind of uh, values and wants for Nigeria. Exactly. So it's really about you today. Um, mm -hmm. so if you don't mind, I would like to really kick off with a, hey, look, early childhood and stuff. You know, I know you grew up in Nigeria on a level. but That's right. Some of that. And align it with um, obviously uh, on the traditional side, and align it with uh, Osasa, and then maybe we can find some alignment, and then I will come in. Okay, let me let me see if I can if I can summarize my growing up because it's okay. it's it's really interesting how I grew up. Um, okay. For obviously, well, I was born in the United Kingdom. Okay. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. So a lot of people, already. Yeah, a lot of people don't know this. I was born in the United Kingdom. Right. Um, my parents, you know, they left Nigeria in the 60s, um, you know, seeking a better education. Right. And they had, they had gotten scholarships, academic scholarships to go to school in the UK. So uh, while they were there, obviously, that's when I was born. And right. then um, and then my they got uh, I think my mom got a scholarship to go to the University of Delaware. You know, uh, so I was okay. about I would say maybe two years old at the time. And so um, they decided to leave the UK and they ended up in, uh, in the US here, uh, here and uh, right. they were in Delaware, Delaware. So okay. now, interestingly enough, uh, they said I was such a handful. And, and let, let me go back, let me go back. Because when they left Nigeria, they left my older brother right. in Nigeria with my, with my grandmother. Yep. And he, he was growing up in the village, uh, specifically in Uboshi, not Asasa. Okay. So, yeah. So we are really Akokue Do children. We lived in, in Uboshi, okay? So okay. at this point, my brother was, was in Uboshi. Right. My parents, you know, gave birth to me in the UK. Then we right. traveled together to the United States. Right. Now, they were both in school full-time, working full-time, and having a, a, a young toddler who was getting into everything yeah. was a bit stressful. So they, they bundled me off. <laughs> yeah, they bundled me up and sent me to the village. You know, that, that's the beauty of <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's, the, that's the beauty of of you know our Nigerian family system, which is an extended family system. You know, right. yeah. they 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 felt that they were comfortable enough to take you know their child and leave one at home, and right. send their child born in the U.S. to go and live in the village. Those were those were the great days of Nigeria, where you know. Food was plentiful, you know, jobs were plentiful, the infrastructure was still pretty good. Yeah. And so um, I ended up in the, in the village uh, with my older brother in Uboshi. So um, I, I guess at about seven years old, I'm going right. to give away my age now. I'm not so sure at, yeah. <laughs> at about seven years old, my brother had to be about nine. So this is ni now 1973. Okay. Um, my, my mom came home for the burial of her, of her father, okay? okay? Now, my mom is from Akwe, so this is all Akokwe do local government area. Yeah. Uboshi, Uboshi was her mom's village, Right. okay? Now, yeah. remember, my dad is from Ososo, so this yeah, is all, now we're, we're going through at do. Yeah. So anyway, in 1973, she came back uh, to bury her dad, and at that point, uh, my older brother and I, Right. were brought back well I was brought to the back to the US. So okay. now we're saying nineteen seventy three. I'm starting um second grade yeah. by American school system. My older brother is in fourth grade. Okay. Yeah. So we start we're here at elementary school, Delaware, 
Again, my dad was an educator. He already had his master's degree, bachelor's, master's from right. University of Delaware. My mom was a, a, you know, a nurse. You know, she had been trained in Nigeria as a, as a nurse. Then she, in the UK, she became a midwife. Then okay. she came to the University of Delaware, got her bachelor's in nursing. Right. So, you know, the whole, the whole thing about the American hustle, you know, that, that's what they were in. And we were, we were growing up in this system. Yeah. So growing up here, I think in, in, uh, in the community we lived in, there were maybe three, if you want to say African-American, African families, black families, there were three of us. So I grew up in a predominantly white world. Okay. 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 So again, think about it. A, a kid from the village yeah. is brought into a predominantly white neighborhood with, I couldn't even speak English at this point. Okay. All I could speak was, all I could speak was Bushy. Okay. And I, re I remember we got here in July 19, 1973. Right. And by September, we were supposed to be starting school. Couldn't speak a word of English. Right. Okay. So, so anyway, um, so here we are in the U.S. as a very small family, young parents, trying to yeah. make it in America. And like I said, you know, I started school here, kind of the, the, uh, the, the target of bullying, you yeah. know. Yeah. And I quickly realized I would have to defend myself. Um, so I got into martial arts right. and started lifting. At seven years old, I was, I was lifting weights and trying to get myself stronger. Now, obviously, having lived in the village and done farming, I was very strong. I didn't look it because I was small, yeah. but I, I was already very, very strong. And so when it finally came time to, when the opportunity presented itself, yeah. my, dad said, my dad said, okay, if they hit you again, you hit them back. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that <laughs> they, learned, they, they learned the strength of, of, of a Nigerian village, village kid, you know? So I, 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 I knocked the kid in the nose and the blood, yeah. blood everywhere and this and that. And that was the end of, of anybody trying to bully me, you know? So that's, that's that, yes. so, so that, that's, that's, that was my, you know, coming back into the U.S. And then over the years, um, I, I grew up elementary school, then middle school, and then first year of high school. And by then, you know, I'd cemented myself as a super athlete, you know, I was track and field, American football, Oh, wrestling, right. you know. Okay. Um, so everybody knew me. I was like the athlete. You know, everybody expected me to go to the Olympics or right. go pro playing American football. And it was that very um, athleticism, you know, that actually caused my dad to send me back to Nigeria. Ah. You know, um, and, and I can I, I think can this recall. is the interesting part of the conversation now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this is where things get interesting. Yeah. Um, so... I get into high school and at high school, your first year, that's where you're going to pick the courses that you're going to take that will be a, you know, prelude to going to university, you know, university right? Are you talking about high school here or high school in uh, Nigeria now? No, this is high school here uh, in, uh, in the U.S. In the U.S., okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. So my first year of high school, um, I, got, I, I got admitted. I was wrestling, um, you know, pending football season and all that. Right. Um, then I started football. Our team, you know, the Newark Yellow Jackets, we were going to the championships. I was, I was doing really well. And then it came time to meet with my guidance counselor who was going to help me pick my courses to go on to university. And you know our Nigerian fathers. <clears throat> it was, <clears throat> he was pretty much adamant. You're going to be a doctor. You're going to be a yep. lawyer. You're going to be, you know, engineer or pharmacist. Yep. Pick some profession, you know. Yep. And my dad was very much into the sciences. So he said, you know, pick something in the sciences and that. So. Um, what happened was I actually went to my guidance counselor, uh, New York high school and my dad had said, you know, make sure you pick maths and physics and chemistry and this and that. Right. So when I went, uh, to meet with a guidance counselor, my meeting, um, I started telling him what I wanted to pick. And this gentleman, uh, an Oibo guy, he said, why would you bother yourself with such difficult courses? You know, that, that's, that's going to be said, you know, you're an athlete. Everybody knows you're going to go pro. You're going to make millions of dollars. Why right. bother yourself? You know, take the easy courses yeah. and, and, and just skate through and, and you know, focus on, on sports. Right. So, again, I didn't know better. This was a guidance counselor. I thought he was looking out for me. So I went with his idea, picked some easy courses, and then um, made the mistake of going back home to tell my dad that, uh, that uh, Mr. Carfagno whoop, said his name. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I can get it. <laughs> yeah. So this guy, this guy said, um, you know, take easy courses. So when my dad heard it, 
it was like I could see his face go very like go cold. And next thing you know, he called my and, and when he gets into this this when that voice when that thunder yeah, yeah, comes yeah. out, yeah. called my older brother, he yeah. told me to get in the car. Right. And within within fifteen minutes, we were at the high school, and he yeah. was walking us in, asking where the guidance counselor's office is. Yeah. We showed him, went in there, yeah. walked into the man's office, closed the door, and then now proceeded to 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 deal with him. You know, shouting okay. <laughs> that why would you tell my children that they should pick easy courses? You know, yeah. lecture this man that. Obviously, you people don't really care about black children because, okay, what happens if he becomes an athlete and then he gets injured and he can no longer play? What yeah. does he have to fall back on? Fall back on, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, he really, he, he, he talked to the guy seriously. And I, I will tell you, two weeks later, I found myself back in Nigeria, my, my senior brother and I. He, oh. he packed us off. He packed us off and sent us back to Nigeria. Okay. It was as, it was as simple as that. Okay. I mean... You know? There's so many stories similar to yours, though, Dilly, to be honest. Yeah. So, yeah. I, mean, I have a very good friend here. As you're talking, I'm actually thinking about him because it's that almost identical. You know, wow. they, they were here and they, they, they had to be forced back on a level unexpectedly. They assumed mm. they were going on a holiday and that yeah. was it. You know, they <laughs> you know I've, I've heard these stories. I've, no, yeah. I've heard these stories you know? where... What makes it unique with guys like that is because now majority of us who are in that situation, um, you know, they, they are either still abroad or, you know, some of them are shuttling between there and, and Nigeria. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, yeah. Not that we're different kind of Nigerians, but our experience growing up is completely different from the yes. typical Nigerian. Right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So trying to unlock, okay, there is a Nigerian that, that is like this and there's another like Nigerian like that. It yeah. makes it very exciting these days. You know, uh, you were That's telling true. me your story in the beginning. Um, you know, I told you when we kicked off that we're going to find similar alignments and of I'm course. In those alignments, of, right? Um, which is course. what we're talking about um, going forward now, right? The, 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 the fact is, um, um, being born in the UK, mm -hmm. I think you're a UK citizen as well, I suppose. I have a, I have, actually have a British uh, birth certificate, but I never got my passport or anything. So okay. currently, currently, I consider myself an American citizen, and I have my Nigerian. You know, those are two passports: Nigerian and, and the U.S. All right. Know. Okay. Yeah. I, I wanted to, to to make that clear as well because I, I I was born in here as well, and okay. uh, similar situation. We we were well, we were in fourth back. We just found ourselves back there with, with parents. <laughs> the parents came to study as well. I think that was a very common thing in the 70s. Oh, wow. You know, wow. and my parents yeah. were here studying as well. Obviously, I popped out, and, and there mm -hmm. you go. And before we know it, we're back home. And yeah, exactly. uh, you see, um, interestingly, uh, you recall all these villages like um, Ososo and um, Uboshi. And, uh, and I know yes. all these places because oh, my, mom is from, uh, my mom is from Lancaster. You oh, know? okay, okay. So, well, so I was, I was, I was in your town not too long ago. Oh, <laughs> I there remember you go. I like myself. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I do like <laughs> myself is, well. I know, I know, because um, <laughs> Ososo is a place, um, and we'll get to that at some point. Yes. And the foundation. So please feel free to um, send questions as well. Ososo is a place that I've always uh, thought about from a tourism point of view. Always. Yeah, always exactly. Because when I was uh, one of my earliest memories uh, of, of scouting, uh, we went for a camp in the in the Somerica Hills. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think I was about seven years old. So that was wow. my first uh, full blown experience around the mountains there. Wow, we wow. The village every uh, Christmas. So That's right. Every Christmas. You know, and That's then right. you know, my uncles and aunties who were there, they would take us on bike rides to Ososo, to Igara, yes, yes. to Ibilo, yes. to Afghanistan, to Okene. You mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. So yes. that's where I have my kind of like a stronghold when it comes to Nigeria. Yeah. The full passion is there outside of Benin. Exactly. Know? Exactly. So having known that, that, getting to know that you are actually <laughs> a, a, a prince from Ososo, um, it gave me an added value for this conversation because you know I can relate. Exactly. Uh, you, you you were there. <laughs> you yeah, were yeah. There, so so I, exactly. Yes. So wow, I know wow. exactly what the place is about. Wow. You know. So let's talk a little bit about uh, life now in in the diaspora. You know, as, mm -hmm. as you know, you being from from Ososo and you grew up there, you understand the the, the people, you understand the mm -hmm. culture. 
if you look at the value that the, the diaspora has uh, from a Nigerian point of view, you know, mm -hmm. what are the things that you think that, you know what, we, we are missing in terms of alignment and then, you know, those resources that we can give back, you know, just, just strictly from your point of view and, and then we can enhance that and see how, how it is. Well, you know, um, from, from, from my point of view, I think what mm. the diaspora can bring to Nigeria, right. and I want, to be care I want to be careful how I, I, um, how I express these thoughts because I don't want to be offensive to anybody back home, okay? Um, I think Nigeria, there's a, there are a lot of experts in Nigeria. I, I will, I'll be honest with you. My best education right. came when I was in Nigeria, okay? Right. Who I am today, that foundation was laid in ICC, Immaculate Conception College, Benin City, right. okay? My principal then was Dr. Joe Itoto, may so rest in peace. Yep. And the VP was uh, Mr. John, you know, an right. Indian, you know. They laid a very, um, very strong, very strong and healthy foundation, which I then built um, off of, okay? So when I say that, um, I, I'm saying that to, to uh, I want to, you know, definitely say that they are, we have a lot of very educated, very smart people back home. Right. They, you know, problems can be solved by Nigerians back home. Okay. Yeah. So then, because there are a lot of diasporans who think, oh, I've been, I've lived abroad and, and, you know, I know better. I can go back home to solve problems in Nigeria. And we have to remember, you know, right. that it needs to be a partnership. We need, we need to be partnering with people on ground. Right. Because even though, you know, all the successes that Nigerians have in the diaspora come from working in a system that basically works, you know. Yeah. Uh, we have an enabling environment here that allows us to, you know, um, really soar and achieve our dreams. Yeah. In Nigeria, it's not quite that simple. That's you know, right. there, there are a lot of very successful people back home, even more successful than myself, okay? And they are winning against all odds. They're, they're winning a country where you have epileptic power supply, you have poor infrastructure, right. you know, your, your telecommunications is not, you know, uh, top notch for the most part. Yeah. So I give a lot of credit to those professionals who are doing it the right way. I'm not talking about those who are, you, you know, doing mm -hmm. some criminal activity or, yeah. Yeah. or using politics to enrich themselves. I'm talking mm -hmm. about we have, you know, and I've met them. You right. know, you know, I'm part of the Nigerian American Business Forum. Okay? okay, we've had we've had experts, business experts from Nigeria, come here to share their expertise with us, to give us a better understanding of what is the landscape back home. You know. Yeah. So that, so that we know that, okay, yes, we have expertise, we, we have the American standard, we have the, the UK standard as far as the professions that we're in. But when we come on ground, what are we really going to meet? Because if you go there thinking that, oh, I'm the all-knowing expert and I'm going to come and, you know, lord over you my American expertise, you'll be shocked. Because yeah. if you don't know the landscape, if you don't know what you're dealing with, if you don't know how to, uh, you know, navigate the, 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 I'll call them landmines of yeah, being of course, in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you will hit a brick wall very, very quickly. Yeah. You know? And, and I can tell you just from experience, from, from my parents' experience, when my mom, you know, who rose to become director of nursing at Delaware State Hospital, you know, right. uh, many years, I think almost 30 years as a, as, a, as a nurse, you know, working her way up, when she found herself at uh, Un, uh, Uniben UBTH in the yeah. community health uh, nursing field, right. she, hit, she hit a lot of roadblocks. I can imagine. All the, all the good intention, I mean, everything she wanted to bring and do and, right. and be able to help the people, she found that the system didn't even want her to do that. Right. The, the, common, the common phrase she heard, and this was, this was the eight, 1981 when we went back to Nigeria, the common phrase she said is, you know, she, she, she used to hear was, your plane never lands. You know, Johnny, Johnny just come. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Johnny just come, your plane never lands. Yeah, yeah, like, okay. you know, you, you, yeah. you don't understand how things operate here, and we're not, yeah. we're, we're not welcoming of your American approach. Right. You know? I so, mean, that's what, go, go ahead. No, no, I, I was going to align with that, because I was going to say, I mean, that, that's something that's even up to today, it's still a problem, because you see, uh, for us now living in the diaspora, um, mm -hmm. you're right. 
so some people look at it and say, hey, look, um, you're going to go back and lord it over the, the Nigerians there. And, and the truth of the matter is there are even a few of us Nigerians who have a certain level of disdain for the guys abroad. So when you're saying, mm-hmm. that, they'd be like, hey, you're not on ground, so you don't know how it works. But exactly. Having, having lived in the diaspora now from your point of view, so you have a holistic view about things because you've lived in Nigeria, you live in the diaspora, and then, you know, you go, you go and you come. So you actually have a full 360 view. So if anything, exactly. you see things a little bit more than the average guy on a level because you are seen in and out, you know? Yes. We, yes. we have some uh, education wise, and uh, we'll go into politics and education on a level. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's just center around this diasporic thing. Um, mm-hmm. you know, if you look at it now, we are looking at Nigeria because there is an issue. Yes. There's an issue that needs to be solved. This issue has to do with you know, education, politics, just lack of basic things that people should have, right? Exactly. Um, uh, people in the diaspora like yourself who have a level of influence to say, hey, look, you guys need to change the way you do things. But you're saying this because not only can you see it, you've experienced it. So you've experienced living in Nigeria. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. And you know that, hey, look, if you guys do one, two, three things, it can work better than you doing just X, Y, Z the wrong way. Exactly. You know, so, I mean, if that's okay, now based on that premise, now we can go into uh, uh, politics and education uh, because mm-hmm. I know for a fact that that is something that you're passionate about, especially the political side of things, not necessarily just at those states, the overarching yes. of Nigeria. Overall, overall, right? overall. Let's, let's now look at it from that angle, from the diaspora value um, that we can bring in. Because let's not forget. Just a three, I mean, two, three days ago, there was an announcement by the president saying, hey, look, we remit $25 billion to the country. That's you know? correct. And we mm-hmm. do that year in, year out. So That's right. So we have a voice regardless. We have a voice, you know, and we have solutions. But from your point of view now, let's look at politics and education, right? Okay. Where do you okay. think we are really struggling from an educational point of view? Hmm. That's a loaded question, to be honest with you. Um, from the, the, reason, the, the reason I'm asking, I know is loaded because I know you're going to help us unlock certain kind of values that we probably ignored on a level. So, mm. well, much. well, you know, I, I, I almost feel, um, you know, Nigeria. You, you have to look at the historical education, the historical content of 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 Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like the the, the youth right now. Are being cheated okay if you look at nigerians going right. all the way back to 80s 70s yeah. going back to the 60s mm-hmm. look at what nigerians achieved globally from an educational standpoint we could stand with anyone on the global scale mm-hmm. and excel okay mm-hmm. um, even even today if you look at if you go worldwide and look at the different professions Right. It doesn't matter where you go in the world. Nigerians are at the top, are at the top of their educational field or their chosen professions. Right. And that came from a foundation that was laid in Nigeria. Right. That came from um, an environment that gave us confidence in our abilities. Right. That there was nothing that was off limit to a Nigerian. Okay. Now the youth today, you know, look at what they have to work with, you know. Um, I feel like they've been cheated and they don't even know, a lot of them don't even know they've been cheated because if they did, um, they wouldn't be supporting people who are robbing them of their educational foundation yeah. and therefore robbing them of their destiny. So the, the, the opportunity to fulfill their, their destiny in life, you yeah. know? Because that's what I'm seeing. Even even those I try to mentor back home. I have you know I have different business ventures, right. and I, I I really try to you know find young men and women and bring them on board. And um, okay. the way they, okay. the way they, the way the way they relate to me, it's almost as if why are you even you know why are you even talking to me? You are a big man. You are this. Why you know what do you see in me? Like they've been so. Um, dehumanized, you know, and yeah. and that's really troublesome. That's that's very troublesome to see, you know, a, a group of youth that just feel like they're not worthy of people of of anybody caring about them or 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 wanting to mentor them or wanting to empower them. Right. And, and so, 
No, I, I was just going to agree with you there because, you know, when I asked you the question, you know, uh, what, what, what's your take on education? You see, I didn't even expect you to come at it from that angle mm-hmm. about, you know, the, the kids being looking at themselves and they're feeling dehumanized. But that is absolutely true. You know, that that's, is obviously you're coming from empathy now. Uh, I was actually just looking at it from maybe from politics or systems failing, but yeah. you're actually taking it to a, a very, very serious level that a lot of people don't talk about you know we don't well, talk about actual effect on the individual you know this lack yeah. of education or not proper education because it diminishes the their value for themselves uh, exactly one perfect example i'm sure you must have experienced this when you go home when you start expressing yourself maybe people pick up an accent you know, right regardless they might pick up one or two accents immediately they pick up that accent subconsciously they put you on a different level whereas exactly you just want to be you it doesn't matter if you're saying things properly or with accent hey look we still want to just get down with you you know exactly exactly but because the the educational system has been flawed in a way uh, are you there yeah some sorry somebody's trying to call me actually. okay one of the one of the youth that i'm trying to mentor back home he's actually calling trying to call uh, me brilliant. i'll okay. talk to him later <laughs> you know so looking at it that way so if you want to expand on that as well because they it really affects these people and I, we see it every day you know so if you want to well, just see on that as well that'd be great well you know i i, I had to go there because um this is something that my wife and i have have talked about you know right, she's okay. been in nigeria she, right. We actually did traditional wedding. We never did, uh, did your quote unquote white wedding. She she just she loves Nigeria. She loves the culture, mm-hmm. and she's you know I like to look at things from her prism as well. You know, right. okay. from, you know, you know to 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 get her input on so many things because she knows what I'm trying to do back home, and she's some and and this has been for years. She's you know we've 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 established organizations. Right. We've 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 uh, been able to achieve communication with the highest levels of power in Nigeria, you know? Um, but then uh, what she, she finally said to me was, you know, at least Osasa, you have some influence. Why not take that as a microcosm of Nigeria and see what you can do, you know, with, with the youth? You know, you've been working with the youth, but she's like, she's, she, her idea was, let's start something with the, the, the primary school level yep. because, you, you seem to struggle with even the youth. It's like they don't, they don't understand what you're trying to teach them. They're, they're not getting it. Not to say don't keep working with them, but let's catch the youth and give them a, a sense of, of value. You know, validate them. Let them know they're, they're worthy and start there and be educating them. And, and to that, you know, we've given this a lot of thought and it, it made sense. It's almost like, it's, you know, in her mind, she's like, you've, almost, you've lost a generation. The, new, the, the, the next generation coming up, capture them before they, they have that look of despair, that look of, of we're not yeah. worth anything, that we're not worthy. We have to beg for crumbs from yeah. politicians and chase after politicians, yeah. Yeah. you know? Some will sell themselves, you know? They want to travel to Italy or whatever. Yeah. She's like, we, we, need, to, we need to catch them young, You're right. you yeah. know? And to that effect, we've even, even worked with um, uh, this, uh, I'm trying to think of his name now. Uh, I, I don't know why, why I'm forgetting his name, but his name is actually Dele Ogun. He's an author, you know, right. Barista Dele Ogun, based in the UK. Right. We have, he came to one of the NABF conferences and his book, uh, Deeply Researched Nigeria, um, it's called uh, Nigeria, the, the Fatherless the fatherless country i'll get the book to you oh yeah please the book, we, we it's, it's, have those kind of things as well yeah it's a book that just really he did deep research into how nigeria lost its way okay okay, okay. Um, going back to the colonial era and i read the book and it really opened up my my mind as to Imagine, yeah. where, where kind of where we got it wrong okay okay and then and then when my wife and i decide we're going to start this program which we will be doing you know um you know, using teleconferencing with the children of Asasa. What we want to do is we want to start doing reading with them. Uh, he has a book for the <laughs> younger children. He Just a book for the shot younger. there. That, that program, it sounds very, very exciting. Is it okay if I kind of follow you up on that going forward? Oh, definitely, definitely. So, yeah. so the, book, the book that he has for the, for the younger um, age demographic is called Oibo Came to Africa by Dile Ogun. 
Okay. 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 So what I'm trying to do is it's going to also benefit us. This is not a one way deal. Okay. Right. Right. I have children. They just turned six years old, you know, last uh, August 2nd. Right. Yeah. I, I want them to start communicating with children, you know, so, so. Perfect. I want this to I want this to be a two way street where Perfect. they're benefiting from our culture. Yep. And then those kids there are benefiting from so they're reading together. There's gonna be yep. this relationship being built even before we do our full relocation back home. Brilliant. I want to I want to start cross pollinating right. the, the mindset and the ideas. Yeah. I want the kids at home to feel like we are on par with anybody anywhere in the world. Yep. I want my kids to get a sense of what's going on in the village and, and, and you know, just feel comfortable, you yep. know. So it'll be easier for them to transition when we do relocate home. Yep. So that's a, that's a program. And my wife is the one spearheading that. She, okay. you know, my wife, she has my kids teaching them Yoruba online. She right. has them enrolled in different courses where they, okay. they meet with kids from all over the world, online school. So these things are... That, that's a very interesting um, topic you just raised because um on on the tnm platform for instance those are, are visions and things that we already putting together and talking to people i had no idea like you know uh, when i was going to jump on the call with you i intentionally did not want to dig too deep so mm -hmm. i can <laughs> and you know so it can be so organic and so when i say to you hey look that is fantastic it's coming from yeah. because we, we we've thought about these things so it's amazing to see people already doing it you yes, know? yes, if yes. If we don't have this kind of engagement, this kind of chat, how, how is that ever going to you, you, Yeah, exactly. You don't know what, you know, so what talking people about are doing. Also now where I, I know the area well, I know the people well, I'm a big passion yes. for it, you know? Yes. So promoting that, promoting that or enhancing that conversation or enhancing mm -hmm. that uh, project, for me would actually, for me and the platform, it would be an honor to do that because it's something that, you know, we're thinking along those lines. Exactly. Uh, Great stuff, and, and definitely I will be talking to you about, about that. Exactly, okay. exactly. So, so I mean, that, that's it. And, and part of getting these things to happen is to have the vision, yes. um, having, having the vision early on. So um, I went home on a visit, you know. Um, there was this young gentleman there, you know, um, Gabriel, you know. He's a young guy. He's not even from Asasa. Somehow he found himself in Asasa. <laughs> and, um, and my mom had somehow brought him to be helping at the pilots with different things you know when they need things printed this you know, so basically my dad my mom and dad took an interest in a young boy and gave him a little office in the in the market area there okay so um when i realized what this young man was trying to do which was teaching the young kids computer skills this and that well i was blown away yeah, so imagine. i came back here i put some money together and right. bought computers and sent them to him I also made sure that, um, you know, he gets support. You know, I actually want to build a formal building mm -hmm. to house a library and a computer center for the kids in Asasa. Right. Now, okay. just, as a, just an example of how when people heard I was doing this, right. their, their immediate thought and what the feedback I got was that they want to know if you want to run for politics. No, no. I, you see the mindset? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I said, so, so I can't just give back because these are, exactly. like, you know, these are young kids. And, and really, the, the, the main thing was I discovered that um, I think Glow had a mask there and, um, and uh, MTN. Right. So I said, well, with this mask, can we get internet? They told yeah, me you yes. Can leverage it. Yeah, you can leverage it. Yeah. So when I found that out, I was like, well, this is a no-brainer. Instead of the kids traveling an hour on two on bad roads to, to access internet, why yeah. can't we just have it at the market square here in this computer lab? So that was, that was my goal. We were able to make that happen. Right. So because of that little bit of infrastructure we have there, that place where kids can go now and, um, you know, I send money, they made uh, workstations and they put com the computers in there and you see kids not going in there learning HTML skills, learning graphic design skills. I recently bought a, a, uh, a, a, a huge printer for them to be able to really mm -hmm. print out. They do greeting cards. They can really print them out in color right. and everything. And I, and I just try to support them in any way I can. But because we have that thing there now, okay, yeah. it's now feasible for us to do this, this chat and the, you know, the, yeah. the Zoom yeah. conference call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and have, you know, so, so these are the things I've been working on for us also.
you know. Okay. Be before uh, even, let, let, let me just jump in before you go further than that. You mentioned HTML and all those graphics stuff. Did you tailor out those things specifically for those kids? You know, did you no, say actually, no, this was Gabriel's, you know, Gabriel's idea. And okay, I, just, cool. I just helped okay. make it happen, you know. Okay. And I continue, you know, I know my fact, the computers are probably overdue for, yep. to, for you know, refurbishment and all that. But it's like, I do things a step at a time because I want it to be sustainable, you okay. know. Okay. So the goal is eventually to try, to try and get um, people here to chip in, to get sponsors, yep. you know, or even, you know, to chip in so that we can, we can do a, a full air conditioned building that will just be dedicated to a computer lab and library for that that the community community can use community that, use um i mean I, I know i'm just talking to you for the first time but i can tell you that that conversation i had that conversation last week interesting on a, on a general <laughs> level i didn't we didn't mm -hmm. pick a town we didn't pick a village on the on the on the network because every week we have this course when we talk to different people about ideas right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. came up and we were talking about it was that what, what about just tailoring like a computer course or a graphic course for a specific community you yes. build a building for them you, mm -hmm. at that building you're going to learn only html you're there going you to go. learn only you know photoshop right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You go there to gain vocational knowledge skills exactly you know? exactly and that's exactly what you're talking about although i just well, said that in a small scale but that is exactly what it is because it's value driven you know now it went as far, it. people went as far as saying we can even do this for medical practices you can make yes mini courses small two even if it's like five ten minutes courses that mm -hmm. can save a life you know teaching a child how to uh stop someone from choking for instance yeah yeah, yeah. the heimlich maneuver uh cpr yeah. you know exactly you know you mm -hmm. can roll that and tailor it for the village or yes. the community so you can have somebody say that in um on a primary for instance you know primary. exactly of course of course <laughs> you know that, that's my area <laughs> that's my area you yeah. can have them say it in the primary they can speak equation they can speak language or whatever you know i lived in equation for a while oh did you yeah okay. my, my aunt was based out of equation so i was in equation for a while uh, you, know, you know, I, I know, I know. There's a, a lot of uh, stories we can we can talk, but <laughs> <laughs> that would have to be on a part two level because there's there's so many stories, you know. Uh, oh yeah. And I would really like us to have probably another uh, conversation, or maybe even a chat about the area because. Um, sorry, I'm I'm digressing now because it's yeah, no. too valuable. You know, it's too valuable. It has to be said. Um, that yes. region is unique on its own, and I'm sure you know that. You exactly. Know, the Nepal is really high up there. The air is mm. different. The climate is different. It's different. Exactly. Exactly. Honestly, the, the crop that I've grown there is different. I mean, I, I, I used have... to go and um, take a cocoa when we used to go. That we used to go in the farms and take cocoa straight from the tree, take the mm. seed out. You know. Yes. Leak and the pop, the pop, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know? uh, listen, in Ubushia, I had my own farm. We, you know, you see, you on go. my mom's, on my mom's side, right. my my grandfather was one of the biggest exporters of rubber, cocoa, cocoa yeah, palm cocoa, yeah. oil. Yep. Yeah. They used, to supply, they used to supply Hershey's in Hershey, Pennsylvania, with cocoa for chocolates, Hershey's chocolates. Yeah. Yeah. They were supplying them from from Ufodo. That was our the name of our farm, Ufodo. There you, go. Bushy, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Yeah. so so it, it's funny because i i when i worked for eli Lilly and company okay. we had a we had a meeting at in hershey pa and there was a room that was called the nigeria room oh. so i was of course i was very yeah, intrigued yeah, i'm yeah, like yeah, yeah. my there? first time here and, the, and mm -hmm. when you're in hershey all you smell is chocolates in the yeah. air yeah all everywhere you smell chocolate yeah so we're doing this meeting at hershey's and um and we went to do the, the tour, you know, uh, at the Hershey's plant. And they had a room called Nigeria Room. So I said, well, what's this? And they had a map of Nigeria and Lagos. And they said, yeah, we used to get, you know, we get cocoa from, from Nigeria. There you go. I said, it clicks. I said, well, guess what? I've just come full circle. I said, my grandfather in the 70s used to supply, 60s and 70s was supplying cocoa to you guys, you know? So that's what I'm saying. It's like Nigeria has, we have so much to give this world. I mean, you I know? don't think it's worth it, but I, I think maybe this is part of the alignment and collaboration um, story about this, these things now, right? If it's mm -hmm. worth it, say maybe at some point, we might um, have to have a conversation just specifically about that region and mm -hmm. that is there 
and just the stuff that you can get, not just the tourism, because the tourism is on the next level if it's really, really harnessed. Well, um, I, I, don't, I don't know if, you, if you've been following. That's another thing. Matter of fact, I was talking to David about tourism potential of a sosa. Okay. If you, if you look, we just, you know, we recently launched pre-COVID the visitasosa.com website. No, okay. I, no, okay. Okay, okay, so it's, it's in its rudimentary stages. I really want to refine this, you know, because we're thinking logistics. Right. There are, there are, there are you know, demographics in, in the West, you know, adventure-seeking right. types. Who right. want this bragging right to say, I was in Africa, you know? Yeah. I said there are things we can do, um, uh, hiking, um, you know, rock climbing, yeah. all kinds of different things. And we have a yeah. great hotel, the, the Filani Hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah. It's second to none. Okay, yeah. I even took my wife there. I said, what do you think about this hotel? Would you be comfortable staying here? She said, yeah. definitely. You know, and, and the gentleman who owns it, uh, by, oh, he's expanding the place, right? right? So I said, what stops us from bringing in adventure seekers? Let's say from Europe. It's a five-hour flight to Abuja. Straight from Abuja. Up, yeah. I'm Abuja Street or Soso. Yeah. Put them up in Filani Hotel. Do a welcoming with the, with the Obao and the case Council of Chiefs. Let the youth have jobs of being tour guides, yep. being uh, their yep. hosts, to do games, to have fun, eat eat well, drink well. Whether it's a three day or a five day excursion, they fly back out. They spend their euro and uh, pounds with us. What what you know? Why aren't we benefiting? And, and we have. And I tell people, when you go into those hills, when they're at Coco the, the, the air, as you mentioned, it's different. Before, it's different. Yeah, it I mean, will, I can tell be. you for a fact because I spent not. I must have spent about, if I'm not kidding, probably about um, 16 Christmases yes. you know, in, in, in that region. Because every Christmas, oh, yeah. we go to the village. It's not a thing. That's right. You know, That's what we, we did. know we're going to go That's, there. And, exactly. Uh, my dad is from Ishan, and my mom is from Lancaster, right? Which is okay. obviously mm -hmm. like Kokoredo. So what mm -hmm. we do, we go, you go past uh, Iroa first. We'll stop there for a couple of days, and then we head up to, to Lancaster, right? <laughs> Sometimes they leave us there because we have more fun there. You know, mm -hmm. they, and they come back to Benin. You know, yes. so you're in the village with without mom, without dad. You're gonna go wild. You know. Yeah, and but it was safe. Wild, it was it was safe to do safety that. Safety was never an yeah. issue. Safety yes. was never an issue. And this is what I'm mm -hmm. trying to relate to a, a young um, a rapper I spoke with, and that's another exciting conversation later on. Uh, who's from mm -hmm. Benin in diaspora? I said, look, when we were growing up, there was no issue about safety. There wasn't. Exactly. The only thing we would fear were stories like there's a huge snake in, in there somewhere. Don't go exactly. in there. A massive snake that would get you. You know, stuff like that. There's, crocodiles. There's, a, there's a river there. I don't know if you know about this river. It's somewhere where there's crocodiles there. And they yes. watch the crocodiles. The crocodiles don't bite nobody. They go there, yeah. fetch the water next to a crocodile. You know? Mm -hmm. and, and I saw this live with my wife yes. for the little crocodile. So there's so much yes. value we can unlock if we start engaging or rather enhancing our conversations about you know what's good and what's not exactly uh, it's really amazing you know so yeah, yeah. if if, uh, yeah. if you want to uh, continue on a level to say okay let, let's bring it back to how the politics is really driving the narrative from mm -hmm. what we're seeing in nigeria now we know it's not a, in a good place you know yes. we know we need change but from your point of view right uh, um just for the sake of time what, what do you think uh, uh, we are missing uh, within politics now because uh, i know you are an activist <sighs> level uh we don't want to call names and say this guy is doing yeah yeah what are yeah. we missing what what value are we missing on what's the thing that that, that needs to be upped up a bit to to make us recognize that hey look we can do better <laughs> Well, you know, what, what I'm seeing and, and you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the whole issue, the issue of politics and leadership, it's, it's a deep one, you know. Mm -hmm. Every time Nigerians get together, and my wife laughs at, at, at me sometimes and my friends, because mm -hmm. every time we, we come together, you cannot get away from discussing the, mm -hmm. the, the issues and the challenges of Nigerians and, mm -hmm. and, and Nigeria and the, and the um, leadership, okay? Yeah. But I always, I always say this, right? You know, what we have to keep in mind and always remain cognizant of is the fact that the leadership we have comes from the people. You know, yeah. you, can't sep you can't separate the two. No, you can't. Okay? Yeah. Now, it appears, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it appears that the people have taken the mindset that, you know, looting is okay. We're, we're okay with it because we're waiting for our turn. 
When yeah. I get there, just don't come and tell me I can't do to. Me, you know, I want hammer. As soon as I become governor or get one local government chairmanship, I want to chop my own. That Perfect. seems to be. Let me let me just just let me just drop this in before you continue. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Before I got on the call with you, there was a guy, uh, it's quite influential, I wouldn't call his name, he went live, right, and he put in the um, Edo State, so he was going to talk about Edo State, right? Okay. The best caller on the program was talking to him that the governor got it wrong um, because he didn't distribute money. So the guy interviewing said, but distributing state money is not right. The guy on the call said, well, but that's how he's played. So the guy hosting, he said, but it's not right. The guy was, no, forget right or wrong. That's how politics is supposed to be. Uh, I, I jumped off the call after that because uh, there was no need for me to continue that because it already, you know, this disaligned with me. I said, you see the mindset? So, yeah, you're right. So, okay, so this is the issue. Now, let me, because I don't, you know, we have a lot of problems, right? Mm. I'm, a true, I'm a true believer in what you focus on mm. is what grows. What yeah. you nurture yeah. Is what will grow. Right. So one of one of my actions and, and initiatives is number one, taking control of the narrative about Nigeria. Right. If you see on if you see on social media, I do the Niger proud. Niger okay. praise. I love that. I love yes. that. Yeah. I I want to market to the world. Yeah. That there are a lot of great, wonderful, loving, hospitable. Right. You know, uh, honest Nigerians. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We we have the ability. Each one of us Nigerians yeah. have the ability to at least market our country better than we're currently marketing it. Totally agree. Yeah. Okay. So that's a responsibility that every Nigerian has. Okay. okay? Because the U.S. has tons of problems. Yeah. They don't market their problems to the world. That's why mm -hmm. we think U.S. is the greatest country in the world. Right. We. I, I lived here. I grew up here. Yep. The U.S. has a lot of problems. And when yep. I highlight those problems, I, it's constructive criticism that this country, yes, you guys yep. have done a lot, yep. but you could be a lot better too. So for Nigeria, we as Nigerians, as well-meaning Nigerians, must take the responsibility of getting control of our narrative and yep. selling the positives about our country to the world instead of always downgrading and, and bashing our own country. That doesn't serve us. Okay, now back to your main question about yeah. leadership. People, I have good friends who have literally called me, have called my dad and told me that I shouldn't be so vocal in supporting a certain candidate. I'm not gonna say any names here, okay? Yeah. But, the, but what I try to tell them is this, um, if you, if you are quiet because you're afraid, mm -hmm. if you sit on the fence because you don't want to offend, yep. if you don't take a stand and support good governance when you see it, right. then you are part of the problem. Yeah, if, not the, if not the main problem. Exactly. You know, my, you know, my dad was always, be cautious, be cautious. No, I am afraid of nobody. I fear no one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I cannot see somebody who's performing, getting our educational system back into, back in line with what it used to be. Yeah. Infrastructure, we're seeing infrastructure benefits. Some can say, oh, he didn't build something. New. No, why should we build something new if we already have structures in place that have not been maintained? One of the biggest problems in Nigeria is we don't right. maintain what we have. I've always yeah. said this. Yeah, that's right. And you're but absolutely right. Yeah. He has come in and he has renovated everything to world-class standards. Right. Why can we not applaud that? Why mm -hmm. should he abandon those things and go and build something new just so it doesn't get maintained again? So mm -hmm. the man I'm supporting, he's, he's, he's doing well by the people. And if we, the people, don't you know, support and rally around, yeah. and we are, we, we're going to let those we know for yeah. a fact yeah, have yeah, looted yeah. our commonwealth, yeah. win over him, then shame on us. I think this aligns with your Praise Nigeria, doesn't it? You know, yes. because, you know, when you look at uh, what you're doing with Praise Nigeria and all that good stuff, you are highlighting the good stuff that we have. Uh, yes. I don't think that's been done enough. And this is one of the reasons why this whole project called uh, the New Nigerian uh, Platform kicked off. We said, hey, awesome. 
we we are out here. We know we can make noise. We know we can amplify mm -hmm. things. Why don't we amplify? I mean, Nigerians are known to be very loud. You know exactly, that? exactly. So that loudness. If we put a positive spin on it, that means we will be allowed to sing our praises and people will exactly. Get it, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of like what you're doing with these your projects. You know, the, the tourism side of things. And if you look at what you've done with the Kogo Sea stuff as well that you mentioned, the Obudu Ranch, all these are things that can be amplified and looked at as things that people need to know that there's so much value, not just in being a Nigerian, but value in the Nigeria itself. Exactly. We are not exactly. trying to reinvent any wheel. You rightfully said that. Things mm -hmm. exist already. Why can't we just build on what we already have, but exactly. in a crazy and positive way? You see, you you see the, the alignment that I, I knew that for a fact that would come out um, organically uh, is, is, is something that because there's a natural thing going on, you know, we both share the same views, we both have the same values on a level, um, kind of like from the same place anyway, you know? So exactly. <laughs> it's, not, it's not difficult for me to feel very comfortable to ask you certain things like, hey, look, what are your concerns? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? But, you know, I still want to ask those kind of questions. I, I know there was mm -hmm. a guy I had an encounter with a guy in the airport, you know? Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit about that, that, that guy in the airport? Well, because I think it's quite inspiring, and then you know. <laughs> well, you're talking about the 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 honest people of, yeah. of uh, Abuja Airport. Okay? That's what I mean, yeah. Because that's okay. the, those are the praises we want to talk about uh, for for, for okay. time factor. Okay. okay, yeah. Let me show you this. Okay, this is the watch. Okay. Okay. It's a, bright, it's a brightling watch that my wife gave to me as uh, I, you know, when we had our children, our twins. Right, okay. this is a very, it's a very special watch. It's a Breitling, very expensive watch. I know that. I had it, yeah. Okay, I had it in my, in my carry-on luggage as we were departing um, on Ethiopian Airlines. We were leaving um, Abuja. Right. And, you know, we had the twins with us. There was a lot of confusion. We were running late for our flight. And, you know, in, inadvertently, I, I, I left the, I put down the um, carry-on luggage and then when we took off, I rushed with the, with the rollers and everything. Yeah. Uh, we, we had brought car seats for the children. So we had them on, on our backs, backpack them and everything. To, okay. to take the, yeah. So basically we rushed and we, we forgot, not knowing at that time, that we left the carry-on with jewelry, my watch, the kids' snacks, books. Everything was there. Because it's stuff right. we would need on the flight. So we had it in our carry-on. Yeah. So we go to sit down. They were literally, the cabin was, the door was kept waiting for us. We get there, we get our seats. And my wife says, oh, you know, as you put up the luggage, make sure you bring that carry on down so that we can give them snacks, you know, uh, uh, once we get up in the air. I go to look for my carry on. I don't see it. And my, my heart sank. She's like, what? I said, the carry on, it's not here. She's like, what do you mean it's not here? Your watch and my jewelry is in there. I said, it's not here. She's like, the kid's snacks were in there. I said, it's not here. She's like, what are you going to do? I said, well, what can we do? I mean, we can't get back off the plane. We're about yeah. to, the door's been closed. We're you know, going to take off. I said, yeah, I guess I wasn't meant to, you know, I wasn't meant to keep that watch. You weren't meant to have that jewelry. Just let it go, you know? Okay. So we, we took off. Okay, once we got to, you know, um, cruising altitude about 33,000 feet, the cell, you know, the phone on the airplane works. So I picked up the phone and I called my, my good buddy that I stay with in Abuja, um, Alaji Idris Mohammed. So I explained the situation to him. He said, well, can you send me a, 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 like some kind of picture of the luggage? I said, honestly, I don't have, you know, I told him what it, the label on it, it would have my name tag, what it looked like, the color, black and gray and all that. Yeah. He said, well, I'm in a meeting. I won't be able to get there till tomorrow. I said, well, okay, <laughs> just consider it gone, right? right? So anyway, we flew out, got, went to Ethiopia. We were in Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa, we flew over to Ireland, Ireland down to Chicago before we came down to Orlando. So we landed and a text came in. Right. He said, is this the luggage? Wow. I looked at it, I said, oh my God, yes it is. I said, first thing I asked is, is my watch and, and jewelry, and you know, Madame's jewelry, every, he said, everything is there, they just kept it for you. I said, what? See? He said, somebody saw it and they put it, they kept it for you. 
kept it safe waiting for the, the owner to return. So when I got there and I was able to show them your text and everything that you said and the contents, they released it to me. I said, you have got to be kidding me. That's amazing. You know? So that's why, you know, I keep saying we have good, honest, of course. hardworking, dedicated. And no, see, this is why nobody sings their praises. Yes. I agree. Nobody is singing their praise. Nobody shows them appreciation. We're not nobody because uh, we are. The, uh, you are. Well, you know? that's we see, that is, I want it to be louder. Yeah, I want it to be showcased. I want the world to hear. They, they, you, know? they, you, you said something just now. I mean, I've unlocked so much value from this conversation. When you say you want it to be louder, you want the world to hear, there is no way on earth that I do not align with that because that is exceptionally key, especially now with the advent of um, technology you know there's yes. so many ways to amplify what you're doing there's so That's many it. ways to unlock value and there's so many ways to align the goodness of what is going on in the country right mm -hmm. uh, nigerians don't need to be different I, i'm in the diaspora uh, uh, you are you are in the diaspora as well the guys mm -hmm. are, we don't need to speak with two different voices we might speak mm -hmm. with different accents because we've gained several different kind of exposure <laughs> You know, exactly. But mindset is still the same. It's you know? same. Exactly. What's come to us, we will come down and put it to a dialect we'll all understand and say, mm -hmm. how you know, uh, are, are you going to follow up with that guy, with the, the, the guy who found this stuff? Uh, do you think? Well, that what I, you know, um, because I, I, I did reach, I, I, I reached out to a friend in Abuja uh, who, right. you know, who does very well and I trust him implicitly. And I sent him, um, I think, almost a hundred thousand, about ninety-five thousand naira, because I oh, wanted him. To, okay. I wanted him to. Um, he owns, um, or he's part owner, now, has a partnership with what used to be uh, Puff Puff Republic. They've changed the name recently. Okay. But I told him, please, just cater a lunch. Okay. And take it to the airport, and you know, just give them a free lunch on me. Right, with enough. with okay. with the with the info you know with what I wrote about them I said you yeah. believe me fact, he was kind enough to you know uh, write up a letter with my words right. to give to them so that they can they can you know frame it and post it up right. because like I said if we are not if we are not um, shouting loud how good yeah. our people are yeah. they, they hear you know they, everybody hears about the hush puppies and the four one nine this and exactly. that exactly. They don't hear the good people who go to work every day, who, who are getting it done for Nigeria and Nigerians, mm -hmm. and nobody's celebrating them. I just feel like we, who, um, who benefit from some of the, the, these, these good things, yeah. We, yeah. Need to be, we need to rally around that. Because listen, when you reinforce good behavior, you know, the good behavior continues. The problem with Nigeria is a lot of people are reinforcing bad behavior. You, they yeah. loot. They get contracts, they take the money, they don't yeah. execute. Right. But then they have people who worship them because they've taken the money for everybody, for hospitals, for roads, people are dying every day on those roads. Then you end up worshiping them. So yeah. now it's almost, it's become a norm. It's become like a culture yeah. that, yeah, I go and get that, make a cheap money small. Yeah. And then I go shower on some few people, they're going to yeah. heal me. Right. We can't. We can't continue this way. It's not. That. It's not sustainable. I agree. So, again, so I agree. The, the so the bottom line is, we need to, you know, because even like I was on an airplane, I got very. This gentleman on on I think it was Airpiece, just smiling, great service mm. was on point when I mm. no, just you could just tell this guy enjoy what he he does for a living. Yeah. Did you want to do it? And yeah, I was David mentioned you were going to do some kind of video on that guy. Well, the, I, I think I, I couldn't, the, 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 are you talking about the Abuja thing? Yeah. The Abuja thing was still, they, they have not responded to my friend, Mr. Olaji de Abiola. The money, he's holding the money. He said they're not getting back to him. So I don't That's know what's fine. going on. That's fine. No, That's all right. I'll but, just, you know. But yeah. as it happens, I would definitely keep you updated. Please. The, the, uh, the one I want to tell you was a flight on airpiece from Benin to Lagos. Mm. Just this, 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 this young man was just so bubbly, so lively. I, I appreciate his service. So, you know, for us, you know, again, I was now on my way headed back out of Nigeria. So I, the bulk of the money I needed to spend had been spent. So I said, okay, I still have some dollars. I took out a 50. As I was walking off, just quietly forwarded it and shook his head. I said, thank you for your great service and kept on going. Okay. 
those things we need to do. After all, here in the West, somebody gives us good service, don't we tip them? Of course we do. Yeah, yeah. We yeah them, right. we, we, but I find that when we go home, we don't tip. We you're should right. be doing these things to show appreciate, reinforce good behavior. Reinforce good That's behavior. That's what they do here. Uh, you know? I, I think that is the key thing I've got from our conversation today, reinforce good behavior. Like I said, I came into this with one intention to, to unlock value and find an alignment, you know, and you, on a personal level, there's so much that I know I'm going to bombard you with some questions later on going forward. Mm -hmm. But from the platform's point of view, Dele, um, it's not just a case of saying thank you. It's a case of saying, look, I, I would like to have a, another conversation with you specifically to um, not on the not only on the traditional side of things but uh, around that region so we can mm -hmm. really unlock the value that a lot of people are not recognizing that exists there simply because i yeah. know we have that alignment you know yes you can say yes. something and I, can, I can agree with it because i've experienced it and i was mm -hmm. there and so the world can see not only what our, 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 our sorcery but what nigeria has in terms of value yeah. Of um, course. Uh, we've been going on for a bit now. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the platform is there to enhance engagement. It's, it's entirely what it is, right? That's, uh, it's I appreciate, enough. I appreciate <laughs> the time you spent. Uh, I, I really want to go on, but I, I, I know that you know, I might be taking a lot of your time. And um, I would no, like I... a favor from you before you go. There's two things I would, I would like to ask. One is okay. also to say something to, to our people, especially your people, in terms of, you know what, it's not just about good governance, it's about understanding the value of good governance. Yes. If you want to run away with that, uh, just to well, close, then come back to us to say, hey, look, what we're doing, how we can enhance this. Mm. Well, it, number, well let, let, let me just say, I really appreciate, you know, this time we've spent to kind of discuss um, our country and some of the, um, you know, issues and, uh, you know, the opportunities that are, that are on ground. Okay. Um, as, as for what I would say to our people, you know, I think we really need to do some, some soul searching and some self-reflection, okay? Yeah. Um, you know, there really is no way to muddle up between good and, good and bad, okay? Right. Right. There is, there's, there's good and there's bad. There's a right way to do things. There's a wrong way to do things. Okay. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's imperative that each of us, each individual Nigerian, knowing good from bad, right. you know, we need to choose to do good by one another. Okay. We need to um, start valuing each other because one of the things that that's glaring to me, you know, and, and this may be for black people all over the world, right. is that we don't value our own lives. We want to shout black lives matter, right. okay? But do we value one another? Right. If we valued one another, you wouldn't loot money meant for everybody. Right. You know, when I drive that Benin to Auchi, Auchi to Igara Road, or going up to Okene, Every day I see accidents, lives lost. We, 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 yeah, because of bad roads, because somebody stole the money. Right. If somebody has an accident, we, there's, no nine one, there's no emergency service to call for assistance. You're on your own. Mm -hmm. That's because people have stolen money that could have been used for that. Mm -hmm. There is no ambulance. There's no has, good hospitals. You know, at what point do we stop and say, we can't continue this way? It really comes down to each individual saying i'm going to do the right thing and not the wrong thing right. because you may do you know you may say oh well you know he's just talk, talking all this uh, english you know i don't care listen one day it will come back to haunt you when you do wrong you see we don't live in a bubble you don't live in a silo we live in a society what what you do today is going to affect somebody in your family tomorrow it may even come to affect your child your very yeah. own child in a yeah. few years down the road and I've, I have had personal experiences where I've seen this come to pass, where somebody stole money meant for a project. The daughter got into an accident. There was nowhere to take up and the daughter passed away. Okay. So, so, yeah. So we really need to do some self-reflection, some soul searching and, and, and make the decision to do what's right by, by, our, by our country, by our society, by our people. That's where I would leave this right now. You know what? I mean, what, what more can I say? Um, but I do still want to stress that we, we definitely need to have a separate conversation with regards to, okay, not just a sosa, 
um, those mm -hmm. platforms, those projects, and how we can enhance and really amplify those good works. Uh, because I'm under the impression that I'm under the impression that uh, good news needs to be shared. Amen. That's, look That's at right. It. If you've got good news, you must share it. Um, exactly. No point is, is there? There's no point lighting a, a candle and putting it under the table. Right, so mm -hmm. all this good stuff you're doing, and, and we have the platforms to enhance those things, and it would be nice to have some kind of synergy going, you know. Definitely, I definitely. I'd, wa I'd welcome that. Time. Yeah, I can only thank yeah. you for your time, and definitely I will be dropping. We didn't even talk about Leo, you know, because that's, that's, that's another true. thing we have. That, that's a whole that's true, <laughs> that's another commonality Leo Fadaka, because Leo Fadaka, uh, wow, since my childhood on so many levels, you would not believe, you know, and to know he's your uncle, wow, uh, that's another level of. Yes. Uh, of respect that uh, there you go I, yes. Right there, yes right so yeah. i'll try and create yeah. another time i will push that for, um, on to you to say let's have another one now to say okay this is all about giving back you know and then see how we can amplify that that would be great thank would you work? thank you oh, thank yeah. you so much for your time David. You thank know? you appreciate, I appreciate you. you thank you so much and i knew it was going to be worth the, the whole time thank yes, you this was great thank okay. you take care man. Right. thanks take care bye yeah Mario,